the circuit what we have seen in the previous page corresponding to buck converter has been drawn on a bigger slide you have a voltage source whose voltage is marked as v in which sends out a current i in input current and this is the spdt switch switch and it an output current flows through the inductor and we have a capacitor as the filter okay inductor filter to filter out filter the ripples in the current and capacitor to filter out the ripples in the voltages and this is your load resistance across which we have a steady output voltage v0 so this is the scheme now let's now let's re, re, see now all these are familiar l c r and input only thing which is not familiar to us is the spdt switch how to realize this spdt switch is the question now how to realize it most pro, most familiar or common thing is to have something like this this will be used in our dc dc converters extensively the midpoint is called the pole the collector of the transistor is called T1. This could be a transistor, it could be a MOSFET, it could be an IGBT, okay, as the case may be. And this is the diode. This is the throw to T2. This is the SPDT switch which we are we are going to use in our DC DC converter analysis. Now, how can P be connected to T1? Once you turn on this switch, now we have a switch and a diode okay current can flow like this which means t1 and p is connected and when current is flowing through the diode t2 and p gets connected so p can get connected to t1 through the switch or p can get connected to t2 through the diode thus the pole can get connected to t1 or t2 that is the basis of a spdt switch what we have discussed now this is an unsymmetrical configuration kind of thing we have a transistor then we have a diode they are connected and the midpoint taken out to form a SP spdt switch a rather uh, convenient topology in terms of logistics is something like this we have to have As I said earlier, this could be a transistor, it could be BJT, it could be MOSFET, any force control switch, we can use it. And this, if it is a MOSFET, you will have an inbuilt anti-parallel body diode. If it is transistor and IGBT, we can keep it. Okay. This is the pole, this is T1 and this is T2. Now, as I said earlier, when the switch, now, now we have two switches, S1 and S2. When S1 is on, current can flow through the switch to P. Now P and T1 is connected through the switch. And when current flows through, current cannot flow through switch in this manner. See, see the direction of emitter. It is from, it is, from, it is like this, towards this, which means current cannot flow in the opposite direction. So, current has to take the path through the diode to flow through P. Same like current is flowing through diode, current is flowing through switch. So same scenario here through the diode it gets connected to terminal 2, PT2, throw 2. Now what is the role of this diode? It is redundant, not redundant, it is, it is not used at all, it is not used. Same goes with this switch, it is not used. We best need one switch and one diode, but having this kind of a combination is not very easy in, in terms of logistics because this is the familiar half bridge leg, two switches. Now, if that is very commonly and commercially available, you can use that. Only thing is that one diode from the upper switch and one switch from the lower switch will be not used. So that's okay, that's okay, but this kind of a half bridge, single leg of an inverter can be easily commercially available. So, you make use of that. So, either this or this. Either way, the system will work. Okay. So, we have a switch and a diode and the midpoint is taken as the pole. Now, this, this scheme will be what we are using for our practical 
DC-DC converters as the SBDT switch. Let's see, let's see the circuit diagram. This is the actual diagram of a buck converter. Now remember this switch and the diode together forms the SPDT switch. This is the pole, this is the throw 1 and this is the throw 2. Throw 1 is connected to the positive of the input voltage and throw 2 is connected to the negative of the input voltage which is a battery usually in this case. We have a switch. You may have a antiparallel diode which is not used. Similarly, you may have a switch here which is also not used. Now, the pole is connected in series with an inductor L and you have your output resistor R across which we have a voltage V0 and to as a filter we have a capacitor in parallel with the output resistor. Now an input current will flow from the source through the switch and the inductor current which is marked as IL splits into two at this, this node one a portion flows to capacitor as the capacitor current IC and the balance flows through the load as a output current I0. If you see, I have used small letter I, lower case letter I and upper case letter I for marking current. That is not random. Lower case is used for instantaneous values. Instantaneous values. And upper case is used for average or steady values. So you can see capital V0 or uppercase V0 which is a steady output voltage. Capital letter or uppercase I0 is for steady output current. Lowercase IC, lowercase IL, these are instantaneous currents. Why this not why this kind of a variation in a single diagram we will see very shortly. Now let's now, since you have now we have understood the circuit diagram and we have a voltage drop across the inductor marked by VL, lowercase VL, which means it is instantaneous. It, it can change with respect to time. So, once again, we have a input voltage source battery which is connected to the load through a switch and a series inductor. A capacitor acts as the filter, voltage filter, and the inductor acts as the current filter. And this S and D combination serves the purpose of a SPDT switch. Now let us understand the working of this circuit. Before we go into the analysis, we have to make some fair assumptions. We first assume that the circuit is operating in steady state. I hope you are understood, uh, you all know what is a steady state. Once a change happens, change of state happens, we will have two, two responses, a transient response and a steady state response. Transient responses die out as time tends to infinity. That means as time passes, these response dies out and what is remaining is called the steady state. Now in our analysis, we are doing the steady state analysis. Now it may undergo a transition and we will, we will wait till the system has attained steady state and then only we are doing the analysis. So we assume that the circuit is operating in steady state. Okay. Secondly. The inductor current is continuous. What is the continuous current? What is discontinuous current? We will discuss shortly but the, for the time being we understand this much the inductor current is continuous. Why? Because the inductor is large enough. How large is large we will discuss later. Assume that we have a large value of inductor through so, so the current through it is continuous. The meaning of this statement will be clear in a few minutes from now. Then now the capacitor is very uh, now the third assumption is that the capacitor is very large which means the output voltage is held constant at V0. We know it may it may not be a realistic assumption, but for a simplicity sake, we will revisit these assumptions one by one. But for the time sake, for the time for the time being, assume that the capacitor is large enough to keep the output voltage constant at V0. Now the switching period is TS, TS switching period. The switch is closed for a time DTS, where D is the duty ratio and the open for 1 minus dts. So, 0 less than or equal to d less than or equal to 1. That is the scheme. Switching frequency is 1 by ts. Hope you understood the concept. For example, if the switching frequency is 10 kilohertz, you have 100 microsecond as one switching cycle. And if, if I say duty ratio is 0 0.4, 
which means the switch is on for 40 microseconds and the switch is off for the remaining 60 microseconds. So that is what we say by DTS and 1 minus DTS. Hope you are clear with this concept. And the last assumption we make is that the components are ideal. An inductor is a pure inductor, a capacitor is a pure capacitor and uh, so is the switch. Okay. Now let us do the analysis. The first portion is then the switch is closed. As I said, switch is closed for a, for, uh, from 0 to DTS, 0 to DTS where D, uh, D is less than 1. What will be the value of D? We will do the analysis for that period. Now, now the switch is closed, switch is closed. I have replaced that uh, MOSFET or uh, IGBT and I have marked with a closed switch, switch is closed. Now see, the positive of the battery is going to directly comes here and negative comes here. Now see, diode, anode and cathode, what happens to that positive voltage coming here and a negative voltage coming here, the diode is reverse biased, diode is reverse biased. As a, as a result, diode gets open. That is why I have, uh, this is this diode is not there in circuit. That is why it is drawn with a thinner line, okay. It is a solid black, it is grayed out. This diode is not there. Now, the current flows like this only, okay, like this. This means, yeah. Now, the load is directly connected to the source through an inductor, through this inductor. Now let us, yeah, now let us analyze in a proper sequential manner. Now let us, uh, what will happen to the inductor voltage? That is the question. What is the inductor voltage at this instant? That is from 0 to DTS. Inductor voltage is marked with a polarity like this, plus here, minus here. So, what is it? What is uh, one side you have plus V in and the other side you have V0. This terminal is at V0. So, it is V in minus V0. You can just see that. If you if you are if you are doubtful, write the Kirchhoff's voltage equation, equation across this loop. That is all. So, V in minus you can write V L. So, polarity plus is here. So, minus V0 is equal to 0. You take VL to the RHS, then you will get Vn minus V0. That is all. That is what I have written here. The inductor voltage when the switch is closed is the difference of V in and V0. And that is for a duration DTS from 0 to DTS. If I draw the curve as such, excuse my slanted drawing, say this is DTS, this is TS, this is one switching cycle of which for this much time, for this much time the switch is on. What is the inductor voltage? You have a rectangular pulse. What is the value of this pulse? V input minus V output. Okay. And what happens? It is interesting to know what happens to the current now. What happens to the current when it is impressed with a positive voltage? To understand that, let me go back to one slide so that I get some space to write. The question is that, a current is flowing, what will happen to this current? So the answer is that, write down the equation, V is equal to L di by dt or di by dt is equal to V by L. Now, V is a constant input voltage, L is a constant resistance, both are positive constants. So, di by dt is positive or is it greater than 0? What is di by dt? Rate of change of current with respect to time. Rate of change of current is positive. What does it mean? As time passes, current continuously increases current monotonically increases. That means, if I keep the circuit on for a very long time, current will continuously increase until inductor or the voltage, so voltage source fails or the fuse opens the circuit. 
So, if you can get a pure inductor, there is no effective series resistance. If you have a pure inductor and a DC source, if you connect it in this kind of a manner, you can be sure that the current will theoretically rise to infinity and practically one of them will fail or both of them will fail due to high current being drawn. So, if you apply a positive voltage, current will rise. Same thing happens when it is a negative voltage. Di by dt is negative. Rate of change of current is negative. What does it mean? Current monotonically decreases with time. So, I, uh, this, this concept is needed for all our analysis. Okay? If an inductor is uh, impressed with a positive voltage, current through it will rise and if it is impressed with a negative voltage, current will fall. Rather, we can say the average voltage must be 0. Average voltage across an inductor in steady state must be 0. If it is not 0, current will have a net rise or a net fall, which means we have not attained steady state. So, in steady state, in steady state, average voltage across the inductor must be 0. Let us use this concept for this analysis. Now, we, are, we have applied a net voltage of V in minus V0 to inductor, which, which is nothing but L d i L by dt. What happens? V in minus V0 is a positive value. It is a buck converter. Input voltage is more than the output voltage. So, this would be a positive number. What, what do we get? d i L by dt is equal to V in minus V0 by L. Numerator is a pos uh, positive constant. Denominator is also a positive constant. d i L by dt is positive. Inductor current continuously rises. Now, let us draw that. Assume that inductor current has some initial value and it rises linearly to let it be i l minimum i l min and this is i l max that is while the switch is closed the inductor current linearly rises from its initial value and reaches its peak value called i l max hope this concept is clear everything i have explained like this now Now, what will happen to the inductor voltage and current? That is what I have just explained. What we have seen? d i l by d t is equal to v in minus v 0 by l. And what is d i l? Let it be delta i l. That is the change in current, change in the inductor current when the switch is closed. What is d t? Time taken for that? It is nothing but the duration for which the switch is closed is nothing but V in minus V0 by L or we can say delta I L ripple current when the switch is closed is equal to V in minus V0 DTS by L. So, the ripple current change in current when the switch is closed is this much. Hope you have understood the calculation. We will do the same thing. Now, that is what being shown. When the switch is closed, the inductor voltage is V in minus V0. And we, we have just calculated this value. This we will, be, we will be using it later. Now, when the switch is open, now the DTS period has passed. Now, we are talking about DTS to TS, the remaining portion where the switch is off switch is off that is why it is grayed out here. Now, there is the input current drawn from the source is 0 because the input voltage source is disconnected from the rest of the circuit. There is no path for the input current to flow. Now, now consider this path, this circuit. The inductor earlier, earlier there was some current flow through the inductor which means the inductor is charged. This charged inductor will force the, the current through the inductor being an inductive current cannot be opened and made zero instantaneously. So, it has to find an alternate path to flow and that alternate path is this diode. Okay? That is why this diode is closed now. Earlier the diode was open, now the diode is closed. Now, the current flows like this, flows like this. That is how the inductor current flows. If you do not keep this diode, then the inductor current will abruptly become zero because there is no other path for the inductor current to flow 
and then it will be a violation of conservation of energy. So, this diode is kept here and this diode turns on automatically when this switch is turned off. Now, what will be the voltage of the inductor? Here it is 0. See, it is directly connected through the diode, it is connected to the ground or the negative terminal or 0, our reference. Here it is V0. So, what is the inductor voltage? 0 minus V0, nothing but minus V0 itself. And now, inductor C is a net negative voltage minus V0. Now, VL is nothing but minus V0 is equal to L dil by dt. Now, what happened in the earlier cycle? We were here. We have seen the inductor voltage was V in minus V0. Am I right? This was dts. And now, we are talking about ts. ts. Now, from dts to ts, the, in, the inductor voltage is minus V0 this minus V0, this is minus V0. This is a, ju just now as I said, the average voltage across the inductor must be 0. So, we can say that this area, area under this curve and this area, area under this curve must be same, A1 should be equal to A2 for steady state condition. Now, since we have in our assumptions, we have understood and we have made that, we have told that we are operating in steady state, definitely this area would be equal to this area. This is the volt second balance across the inductor, strictly following the conservation of energy. Now, now we have seen what has happened to the voltage. It would be interesting to see what happens to the current. V0 is a positive constant, it is output voltage. L is a positive constant, it is a inductance. So, V0 by L is a positive, but you see the negative sign here, which means DIL by DT is a negative quantity, less than 0, which means current has to fall. Now, earlier what happened to the current? It started from, this is IL, this lower value was IL minimum, IL min, it, it did rise. At the instant DTS, it, it attained its maximum value of IL max. Now, it has to fall because DIL by DT is less than 0. Now, it falls and reaches the same value as IL minimum. That is the essence of steady state. Okay? In, a, in a cycle, it started from some value. At the end of the cycle, it has to come back to the same value and the next cycle will start again when the switch is closed, inductor current will rise again. This is the pattern of the current. It linearly rises because the inductor voltage is positive and it linearly falls because the inductor voltage is negative when the switch is open. That is what is being shown here. VL is minus V0 and as a result, now let us analyze, I mean let us calculate what is the DIL by DT minus V0 by L and what is DIL? it is the ripple current when the switch is open. And what is the time taken for that? Time for which the switch is open is 1 minus d into Ts is equal to minus V0 by L. If you cross multiply this, then you will get this. Okay? I think I made it's, it should be off period. Okay? So, delta I L open delta I L when the switch is open is minus V0 1 minus D T S L. We have seen what is the ripple current when the switch is closed. Now, we have calculated what is the ripple current when the switch is open as well. Now, this is the waveform. I have shown for two cycles the inductor first graph, the, the one in green is the in voltage across the inductor. When the switch is on, switch is on and here switch is off. How can I say that? Because DTS is till this portion. So, 0 to DTS, the switch is on. When switch is on, the voltage across the inductor is input voltage minus output voltage. And when switch is off from DTS to TS, it is minus V0. 
this is minus v0. Same thing repeats here. The switch is on again, it is off again. On again, off again. It will continue like that. Okay. Now, the current rises from a value called IL minimum, this point, this value, IL minimum. Under the influence of a positive voltage, current rises, reaches its maximum value, IL max. Then, the inductor sees a negative voltage. So, the current will fall. And since it is steady state, at the end of the cycle, it comes back to the same value, IL min. So, the next cycle it is on, it rises and it goes to the same IL max. Then it comes back to the same IL min. So, the system is operating in steady state. Now, the inductor current has a triangular pattern. The average value of this inductor is called IL. You see, I have used uppercase letter here. Here it is lowercase. Instantaneous each second, each time instant it varies. Whereas, the average, if you take the average value, that is shown as this dotted line IL. Now, the capacitor current. Now, we have told that the average voltage across inductor must be 0. Take the dual, if you apply the duality principle, what can we say about the capacitor? The average current through the capacitor in steady state must be 0. If you observe the circuit here, you see the inductor current has two components. One flows through the capacitor, one flows through the load resistor as the output current. In our assumption, we have assumed that the capacitor is large enough to keep this voltage steady and constant, which means if it is constant, if V0 is constant, V0 by R is also constant, that is nothing but I0. That is why I have used uppercase letters here. So, the inductor current has a steady component and a ripple component. Okay. Steady component flows through the load and the ripple component flows through the capacitor. Now, you see the inductor current has a steady component which flows through the load. So, I L is equal to I 0. The average inductor current is same as the load current and the ripple, this up and down movement, if you drag this level, this average value, if you drag it to 0, then what is left is the ripple. If you make the steady component 0, that is what I said, you drag this dotted line to 0, the entire thing will come down and what is remaining is only the ripple, that is the capacitor current, that current will flow through the capacitor. If you, if you take this area and this area would be same. If A1 and this is A2, they will be same. Only then we can say the system is in steady state. The average current through a capacitor in steady state must be 0. I hope you understood the concept. That is why capacitor has only ripple current flows through the capacitor. When the current through the capacitor is more than 0, it is dumping some charge into the capacitor. Okay. So, cap the cap output voltage rises by some extent. Very soon, the current goes below 0, wherein we are taking away, away, away the dumped charge. So, the capacitor voltage comes down and you dump charge again, you take out the charge. Like that, you have a kind of a ripple voltage. So, earlier we have seen a ripple voltage of as high as 100 percent. That is, the in it is either input voltage or 0 or it is input voltage or 0. Now, that has come down because we have kept a capacitor. I hope this concept is clear to you. Now, moving on to the major portion, the voltage gain, voltage gain of the inductor, uh, sorry, uh, of the converter. Under steady state conditions, you see, current did rise during the switch is closed this much and the current did fall when the switch was open this much and they are same. So, the ripple current when the switch is closed must be same as the ripple current when the switch is open. We have calculated the ripple current when the switch is closed V n minus V 0 d T s by L. V n minus V 0 d T s by L and 
you have also calculated see the ripple current when switch is open minus v0 1 minus dts by l minus v0 by l 1 minus dts they must be same if steady state has attained this is one of the assumption we made that we have attained the steady state so under steady state this equation is valid we can cancel out this inductor value the switching cycle and once you expand and write i will write it here v in into d minus v0 into d is equal to minus v0 plus dv0 no actually this is uh, this ripple current can uh, see this this negative is not there since we are equating it i am sorry for that mistake v0 minus dv0 okay so this gets cancelled out these two terms get cancelled out and you get v0 is equal to d into vn okay so what happens your output voltage gain which is v0 by vn is equal to the duty ratio thus the output voltage of bucket water is d times the input voltage by varying d we will be able to vary the output voltage i hope you understood the concept so what is the range of output voltage you can get it can you can get it from 0 to vn simultaneously d will be from 0 to 1 when d is 0 output voltage is 0 when d is 1 output voltage is vn when d is between 0 and 1 you can get any value between 0 and vn i hope you understood the concept of buck converter